to a Movie Scramble podcast interview special. Today I'm speaking with Ingvar Sigurdsson for his film A White White Day, which played at the 2020 Glasgow Film Festival. Apologies for some of the background noise. It was a particularly busy hotel area that I had a chat with him, but the conversation is in-depth and quite fascinating, and I do hope you enjoy it. Thank you. So, the film itself obviously is showing at the film festival this year as part of a more sort of focused approach towards Icelandic film. It's sort of a, it's a focus on various films that are actually coming from Iceland, both so sort of ones that are regarded as classics like uh, 101 Reykjavik and The Juniper Tree and The Ice and Yourself, your film, as well as a, a lot of other ones as well, a lot of new films. Do you feel that Icelandic film is underrepresented, sort of internationally? I think uh, the Icelandic films are very much in focus now and they are very, yeah. they're, 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 it seems to be, seems to be cool to be from, yeah, Icelandic film industry. It's like, uh, it's, it's very, I mean, because I have been in this since like, uh, like, uh, yeah, I was traveling on festivals first around 2002, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, you can feel the difference. You know, it's more uh, get more isolated films. Of course, we are we are we are producing more films now. Yeah, but they they are getting better, and uh, yeah, we are getting better in the, this profession. So it's amazing uh, how it, how how big the focus is on. Obviously, oh, speaking about the film itself, the character of. Ingmunder, that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm in the ballpark. Kind Inge, of Ingmunder is Ingmunder. Yeah. Excellent. It's quite a complex character, quite a deep character. You've obviously played policeman before. Yeah. Um, how did you approach this character in terms of like the preparation for it? Was it similar to how you'd approached it before, or was was there was there more depth to it that you had to sort of come at it from a different angle? Yeah, I mean because this this is not about him as a policeman. He'll, because he's kind of off-duty policeman because he's still dealing with his grief mm-hmm. and the loss of his wife and witness. So he's, yeah, he's a totally different character from uh, many of them that I've played before. So, so it was a different approach to it, yeah. And also because it's a, you know, there are always, you know, different scripts and different directors, different producers, it's all always new. Yes. Yeah, so uh, in that sense it was, uh, he was more like an old-fashioned farmer or, or, a, or, a, or a Viking, you know, mm-hmm. this guy. Yeah, it seemed to be very sort of hands-on kind of a guy who's very good with his hands, obviously apart from when he smashes his thumb with a hammer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it appeared to be quite a demanding role because the character is on screen for the whole running time of the film. Yeah. So pretty much everything is on you you are the, the focal point, Every, the story revolves around yourself and all the other characters obviously interact with you, but you are the sort of the constant, so was there a pressure on you to, more of a pressure than normal to deliver? Yeah, I mean, it is more responsibility when you are so much in, uh, on, on screen, and, uh, but of course uh, I couldn't, I, I, it's always, you know, I had, had great, great fellow actors and, 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 and super super good director so I was like uh, I, I never felt alone yes. you know? and, and I never felt like uh, over you know and under so much pressure that I couldn't deal with it you know I was like I was really confident with it also because it was written with me in mind uh, he uh, I worked with the director first on his graduation film film school and uh, we uh, and I saw in him something special mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, yes. and, and, and right away I found out that he's a, he's a very interesting artist he's not just a filmmaker or a, he's, he has a, a d- different approach on, on how to tell a story than, than, than many others I worked with even though they were great mm-hmm. so uh, I found him so interesting and, and we we cope really well together, so he, he wrote this with me in mind, and, and so I knew what was coming up. Mm-hmm. I knew he had been feeding me with all kinds of thoughts, you know, it's like, 
I'm thinking about that now, and I'm thinking I'm listening to this music now. I'm listening. So it was like really, really great. I mean, to uh, and I was I was so excited to to start shooting. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's quite a collaborative process between yourself and the director, given that you spent so long sort of bringing this to the screen and everything. So was that something that did you go out of your way to look for new talent, people that you can work with and people that are on the same sort of wavelength? As you said, you were attracted to him because he was more than just a director, he was an artist, he was an interesting person. Is that something that you look for when you're looking for projects, looking for work? Well, yeah, I mean, I like to, first of all, I just like to work with nice people, and, you know, <laughs> and, you know, yeah, and uh, to uh, have fun and work, uh, even though uh, we are talking about important things. Yes. And, uh, but it's, and uh, I'm, I'm, I think I'm very easy working with all kinds of people, uh, and uh, so, uh, but the, yeah, I mean, I, I sometimes deny or I say no with, with scripts I read, mm. I read a lot. Of course. So I can't do, do. So sometimes I don't <laughs> don't like you know how the how they are gonna cook it. So I, yeah, you are right. I mean, I look for something new, special, something I can learn of. You know. So you're always constantly learning. I know you've been you've been in the business now for what, sort of thirty years. Yeah. Total. Yeah. Yeah, but still, I I, I I you know I've never said to myself, yeah, I got it. Yeah, I can do it. You know, I I have it now. Mm -hmm. I have it now. You never have it, you know. You yeah. well, you have to search. <laughs> Be like a curious child. I yes. Mean. So you're listed as an executive producer on the film, and I had a look at your IMDb credits. You, do, you don't seem to be involved in that sort of area quite a lot. So why, in this particular case, were you wanting to be more involved in terms of like a, an exec producer role? Maybe because I uh, I mm. had a strong belief in the film and I invested in it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So. Both that and also uh, because I'm the, the the director is young. I mean, in that sense, and he, he, it is his first feature in Iceland. He did his first feature uh, in Denmark, and then this is his second feature, and so he is a newcomer. People didn't know him so well, mm -hmm. but I've been in the business for such a long time. So for me, it was both for the producer who is also young, just like to make connections. Then, yeah. For the good of the project, yeah, more yeah. than anything else, yeah. Is it something that you would be looking to do a bit more, go into sort of production? You've obviously got you had a writing credit as well on the yeah. film. Is that something that you would occasionally do, or is it something that is just sort of in the background? Your main focus is just on the acting more than anything else? Yeah, I mean, no, that's just like uh, it, it comes, you know, it's more like a coincidence than a, a, a total decision, you know. I'm mm -hmm. going to produce this. So it, it, it was uh, when uh, my first, when we were doing, we did two films together. We, we had the theater, like a theater and uh, a, a company called Vesterport, and we made these two films, Children and Parents. So mm -hmm. we produced it and we wrote it. Yes. So that was uh, my first, you know, uh, uh, as a, you know, as a producer, and the, how to, but this is, I mean, I would never look at myself as a, a film producer because uh, I, I, uh, that's something I cannot do. Only thing I can do in, in while producing a film is uh, either invest in it in, in some, somehow yes. or help out to make connections, you know. I've done it before like finding international actors finding because I've known people here and there. It's a very, as I've said before, it's a very demanding role. Is it the most demanding role that you've been involved in? It seems, I mean, you've, you've obviously got a very broad sort of body of work, but is this the most demanding just in terms of, I'm, I'm thinking more in terms of the sort of the, the physical as well as the the sort of the, the, the mental aspects of it and kudos to you for being able to play football <laughs> as well <laughs> with some degree of confidence mm. I know what it's like mm. the knees start to go after a while so yeah um, pro has this been your sort of most demanding role to date it's so yeah. difficult to say but uh, I don't think I could take this I mean it, it is a huge responsibility responsibility because it is it's a huge role <laughs> mm -hmm. So in that sense, you have to be really focused because it's not shot chronically, you know. Uh, yes. So so you have to be focused how to glue the things, the, the world together. Mm -hmm. So uh, in continuity. But I've done that so many times before. I mean, it's part of your process, really. Yeah, and uh, it's demanding in that sense that 
the, the director is exciting and demanding. I mean, he is he's not easy in he's easy to work with. Mm -hmm. He's an easy guy. He's a good good guy. But he he puts a lot of pressure on himself. Yes. And when you are working with that kind of guy, you you have to put the pressure on yourself. Obviously, obviously, yeah. yeah. Obviously, the central relationship within the film is between Ingmander's character and his granddaughter, <coughs> and it seems very natural. We've got children of my own, so you, you get an idea of how people actually interact with sort of parents and grandparents with children and it feels like a very sort of natural, very organic connection because it's not overly loving, that it's not very disnailer, they just seem to be very easy in their company without having to say too much or he doesn't have to be overly affectionate because she knows that's there. How did you develop that? Because it seems it's a very difficult thing to do in that sort of situation. Did you spend a lot of time together in order to build a working relationship and from there yeah. move on to that? I mean, strangely, it was, uh, I met her like three weeks before, coincidentally, before you were shooting, and I was, we were just in the swimming pool and she spotted me. She ran up to me and I was just relaxing in the hot tub. She said, you are going to be my grandfather. And I said, yes! <laughs> and that was, that was it. I mean, we hugged and uh, and uh, we were so both very excited to start to work together. And she's very playful, and but at the same time, he's very professional. Mm -hmm. And she is, she's just amazing. Yeah, oh, definitely. Yeah, as I said, it was very, yeah. very natural the way it came across on screen. So we didn't, we didn't spend any time to, to how to. I mean, we rehearsed. We went through our lines but it was mm -hmm. playful we tried this and now this and this and uh, but it was it was always like you know the mind of the children they are they they can do and they can do the same thing again and again and again a little bit differently and they are always excited mm -hmm. obviously the film spans a couple of years and I was listening to a, an interview with yourself and the director, Hilner? Hilner, yeah. Hilner. Yeah. I'll get it, I'll get it eventually, I'll get a good yeah. answer. He was saying that it was obviously like a two year process where he was filming the, the house that was abandoned over the various seasons, which was a bit, I thought it was a very good way of actually, it's almost like a, it was a montage if you like, but it wasn't really, it was something quite different, it just focused on the weather and yeah. the horses. And, <laughs> so that whole process, it must it must be quite a strain on yourself because if you're the filming would be a very short process, I would imagine because low budget filming, you try and maximise days and everything, but then you've got this whole extended period where it's all in development and everything, and you involved as well as an executive producer. Is that something that adds a wee bit of pressure to yourself in terms of your performance when you're actually you're told right we've we've done all this prep work so this one now. You, you kind of hit it. Do you, is that something that sort of plays on your mind at all when you're going into production, or is it just because you've, you're so experienced now that it's pretty much there? Mm, I was just because it was uh, even though I was producing it, I was I was just like watching, you know. Mm. I was just by on the side and waiting to uh, the the actual time when we started to shoot the film. Yes. But and I was just excited, and uh, I was not like. Uh, Never sure it was, but, but you. I was hoping and I, I was really believing it, it's going to be something special. Mm -hmm. And because I believe in the, in I believe in the director and I believe in his decisions. Yes. And I've, I I really respect that. So I was just excited and believing that we were about to make something. You know, you know I'm <laughs> hoping for a masterpiece. You know something. Yeah, of course. But, uh, so, uh, and uh, it, is, it is something special yeah. uh, that has actually come out at the end of it. Yeah. I was sitting watching, I was thinking yeah. it's, it's quite a unique film the way, the way that it approaches yeah. grief and everything like that. It's, it's, yeah. It was an interesting take on it. The, the main character is very buttoned down, it's very contained. Yeah, he doesn't open up to anybody, and like that. I thought that was particularly well done because there's obviously the opportunity to for the character to expand a little in certain scenes without giving too much away or anything. I, I thought that was a partic it was a particularly sort of brave performance because you played it quite minimally. Yeah, you didn't open up. I thought that was it was particularly good. I think because the guy, the Inkeman, that is kind of he's not giving anything. Uh, he he. Uh, he's, he's in that sense very simple and old-fashioned 
he doesn't want to show mm. weakness. He needs to show strength for his family. I mean, he's, he's a simple man in that sense. He does, doesn't need much and mm -hmm. uh, no bullshit. He yes. just needs a wife, good wife, uh, a house and a, a work and a good family. And But then uh, something happens that it was not in the picture. He, he can't handle, he cannot deal with his grief. Yes. Was uh, not in the picture. And then I think instead of going to the psychologist, which he hates, uh, and uh, find, uh, I think he find, finds it pretentious or something, he l believes that he will be cured by building a house or something. Yes, yeah. obviously the film premiered at Cannes last year and you got the, the Rising Star yeah. Award. How does that feel being an actor for so long and then being recognised as a, a rising star? Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously it's not an age thing, I wasn't getting it that No, but the, I, I got it that I, I was so surprised. I mean, I mean uh, that was, that was not, not a prize for me, I thought. I, I was like, what? I was hoping the film would get the prize. Mm -hmm. But I think it was the jury, I think they were under some pressure that they had to give the French movie, uh, I, you know, that was what I thought. And also the French movie, I think, was had been sold to so many countries, it was so popular and so mm -hmm. good. So they had to give, they, they, had, they had just three prizes to give. Mm -hmm. The main, the best film, best rising star, and uh, uh, or, or, or the rising star, or or a script, mm -hmm. and the script. So, and uh, when he, the head of the jury said, "Well, you, we couldn't. We had to give, you know, the, the we had to pick something. You know, the film was so powerful." So, mm -hmm. And uh, and I said, "But you know, I'm an old bastard. <laughs> you know, I've been doing this, you know, and recognized in Europe for so many things." And he said, "Well, I don't know." You might be old for Iceland, but not for, for the whole of the big world. <laughs> <laughs> you've obviously had, a, as I've mentioned earlier, a career span in 30 years. You've been in Icelandic productions, film and television, and internationally as well. You've been in various films. Apart from the obvious differences of scale, what are the differences in the approach between the international and the national Icelandic productions that you find? What? Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh Strangely similar. I mean, uh, to make a film is, you know, we, we there is a like kind of an international language, you mm -hmm. know, which everybody use in, in the film business. So that's kind of homey. Mm -hmm. I mean, always. I mean, it could be working in a in a, in a film and in, in a big, but budget film in a studio. Uh, you are welcomed usually. Yes very much even though it's huge you are you are embraced by good people uh, and uh, I usually feel like that when I and I feel like that of course at home I mean you know, such a small community everybody knows everybody like uh, I, I have a few like English fr actor friends and one of them I, I I did a, one scene with him in a film many years ago, mm -hmm. and I didn't know knew him at that time. His name is Philip Jackson, and I, I, this scene between us was I strangled him in a lift, you know, in the elevator, and that was it. And then we didn't, and I, uh, then I, after the, uh, in the end of the day, uh, I said just bye, and uh, and uh, a few months later he came to Iceland to to work on a short film. Mm -hmm. He said, I worked with an Icelandic actor here just like two months ago. His name is, I found it, his name is Inkvar. Do you happen to know this guy? <laughs> Nobody. I mean, everybody had my phone number. <laughs> so was, uh, that was easy to. <laughs> so since then, we have been uh, really good friends. And nice. Oh, so that's really good. Just to, to close off, just want to speak briefly about the, the end sequence in the film, the very last. Yeah. A sequence where a character almost has a bit of a breakthrough and the way that that's shot, there's obviously very little of it in terms of spoken dialogue and the camera takes its time and works its way into it. It's, it felt maybe about a minute and a half, two minutes, that it was just yeah. slowly coming in yourself and all the emotion was starting to show in your face. But again, in quite a reserved way, that appeared to be an incredibly difficult thing to do. In order to maintain that, Obviously emotion and everything is part of your, your toolbox, part of your what you can do, but in order to maintain that for such a long period of time, that sort of intensity, I mean, how, do you, how do you even start with that? It's difficult. When I saw it first in the script, mm -hmm. and, and it, it was written like that, mm -hmm. camera goes slowly in, in his face, and you know, 
and his face is going to fill out the screen. And, and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to do that? How am I going to do that? And, uh, but it was, luckily, uh, we shot that scene just on the, the final day, I think, mm -hmm. or the day before the final day. So uh, I had gone through the whole, so I, I was very emotional. I was very, I was saying goodbye to this, this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, in the end of the day, it was easy. It was, so it was, everything was in, in myself. So, uh, and she was there. I had been waiting for her. I know this actress, she, I worked with her before, and she is, so I, she was the, I could uh, picture her finally in front of me, uh, as she is, just all of her. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, it was easy. Yeah. You make it sound very, very <laughs> straightforward. Um, just to finish up, what are you, what's next for you? What's coming up? I'm doing a TV series, uh, it's preparing it now, uh, called Katla. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about people, it's a Netflix distribution, and uh, it's coming up uh, shooting in, in the middle of m m March, and we're through, through, out through U July. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about uh, <laughs> people living under the volcano who has been erupting for two years, or one year at least. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, and there are some mysterious things ha happening. Uh, you know, it's a volcano under the glacier, and, yes. and uh, so uh, it's kind of a sci-fi in the end. Yeah, that well, sounds good. Yeah. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Well, that's excellent. Thank you very much for your time. The film is excellent. I, I really enjoyed watching it. It's going to be reviewing it on the site and everything. And I'm really, really, really pleased to uh, get the chance to speak to you today because it's, it was quite an interesting watch and everything. So thank you very much for that. Thank you, man. All right. Uh, Thanks a lot.